Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is blocking inbound IP addresses in Azure Logic App Standard using the access restrictions feature. Let's go. Okay, let's talk a little bit about why this content is important. So previously on this channel, I've talked a lot about security when it comes to Azure Logic Apps. And more specifically, I spoke about protecting your standard Logic Apps instance with private endpoints. So that was the video below 129 securing Azure Logic Apps with private endpoints. That protected our inbound traffic. Now that approach works great when you want to restrict inbound traffic to a local network. However, you might have some legitimate needs to expose your Logic App endpoints to external parties, so trading partners, for example. So the question is, how can you go ahead and limit which IP addresses can access your service? And so we can enable a feature called access restrictions within our Azure Logic App standard configuration. There's a similar feature for consumption. I do talk a little bit about that later on in the video, but core focus here is standard. Now also I'll add that Azure API management also has a feature that works similar to this. And you can actually use these two features in conjunction. You can have APIM as basically your front door to all of your Logic Apps, and then only trust traffic that comes from your API management instance. Uh, so that works great. I would con you know, recommend using that approach if you have access to APIM. If you don't, however, then this is a great feature and something that you definitely should include if you are exposing HTTP triggers. Uh, when I do that, I never want to do that on its own, just using the SAS token. I always want to have another layer of protection, and this is a great way to Im improve your security footprint and posture. So let's go ahead and let's dive in here. So to illustrate what we're trying to do here is we have our Logic App Standard instance, and what we want to do is filter out what type of request or requests from where we want to accept. And so that's what's going on here is we have the ability through access restrictions to go ahead and permit or explicitly deny different IP addresses and ranges um, that allows us to determine whether or not we want to permit that traffic to hit our Logic App or not. Uh, don't worry about too much about this stuff. You'll see that in an upcoming video, we'll talk more about VNets and, and things of that nature. So to enable this, we need to have an existing Logic App standard instance deployed. Once we do, we'll go ahead, we'll click on the networking link in the left navigation. We'll then go ahead, click on access restriction. When we do so, we have the ability to go ahead and to create rules. And naturally we can create priorities as part of those rules as well. Uh, the lower the number, the higher the priority, the higher the number, the lower the priority itself. And so here's where we can go ahead and choose, like if there was a, a block of IP addresses that we absolutely wanted to deny, we could create an explicit deny rule, but otherwise we'll go ahead and have an allow rule itself. Now, for the purposes of, of this demo, what I've done is I've gone ahead and created my own rule for my laptop, and that is going to be an allow rule. And then by default, there will be a deny all rule that's created for us that will deny all remaining traffic or otherwise. There's some additional um, capabilities here as well. I'll let you look into, but if there was things you wanted to do from a header perspective, we could go ahead and validate uh, headers as part of requests, um, who something's been forwarded for. So we do have uh, some additional capabilities as well. Just hover over the icon here and you can get some additional information about that. So let's go ahead, let's see a demo. I'm gonna approach this from two ways. Number one, I'll go ahead and uh, show you a consumption-based logic app that will have an IP address of you know something in Azure outside of my standard instance. So this is going to use the public IP addresses to route those requests. And we're gonna go ahead and see this fail. And then naturally I'll go ahead and show you uh, from my laptop where I do have that IP address in my permit list. And we'll see that that traffic is able to go through. Okay, so once again, in the Logic App standard instance, I've clicked on networking. I've already enabled this feature. We've got uh, this enabled, we can see it's checked on. And we can also see that we've got uh, an inbound IP address that really represents our IP address for our Logic App instance. If we go ahead and click on access restriction. We're gonna see that we've got my 
rule that allows my laptop to be able to connect and send requests into this specific Logic app. Uh, the other thing to note, and I would suggest this is probably a good idea, is we have this, what looks like the same URL, except we've got .scm. And so this is really our, our kudo instance for our, our logs and whatnot. And so probably a good idea to have the same restrictions here, unless there was a reason not to. Perhaps maybe from an operations perspective, you might have some additional requests, but I don't think you'd wanna leave this open and close this up. So you'd want to either use the same rules or you, depending upon your scenario, if it's internal or external, then maybe adjust this one so that you can um, access information from a, uh, an API perspective uh, to get at your logs. Let's go ahead now and flip over to our consumption logic app. Here we've got just a, an inbound request and we're gonna go ahead and call our logic app standard right here and then go ahead and get a response. So let's just go ahead, we'll run this specific trigger. We should see that this fails because it's not permitted to call our API or our logic app. See, we've got a failure. Let's go ahead and expand it. And we'll see we've got a 403 error. And it says web app unavailable. Uh, really it's uh, 403 that's access denied or, or forbidden. Uh, one thing just, to, just to, to share while we're here is that we do have, when we talk about consumptions, we do have something called workflow settings. These would be kind of similar, not as advanced as standard, but we do have the ability to restrict access to our logic app through consumption. Uh, standard, you know, this is uses a little bit of a different methodology, but you can do this in either or. So I thought I would just share that. Now what we're gonna do is change gears here a little bit. So I'm in Postman and I've copied and pasted my HTTP trigger URL into the URL bar here. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this. And because my IP address is in that permit list, that allow list, I can go ahead and make those requests. And so this would be an example of if you had say a trading partner and you were exposing a logic app and you wanted to make that available to just certain IP ranges, uh, this would be how you would go ahead and do it. It's quite simple to, to set this up. You know, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, you can do similar things with Azure API management. That's one of the core capabilities of APIM as well. I would say, you know, if you can use APIM, you should. Uh, there's other benefits beyond it, but if APIM is not available to you, then naturally this is a, a good choice. And it's definitely, anytime you expose a logic app using that HTTP trigger, I feel like you should be doing some level of authorization and authentication. And so we've talked about easy auth on the channel. That's a good way of making sure it's authenticated. You could also use conditional access to restrict what IPs can authenticate it. Um, but maybe you don't have an Azure AD authentication token coming across from your trading partner. So this would be another level of governance and, and security that you'd be introducing. All right, that concludes another episode on the channel itself. Thanks for tuning in. If you're on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. YouTube, obviously, like, subscribes, comments are welcome. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.